passage that we're going to look at today comes from Revelation chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Theatra, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. <coughs> Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a minister in church, and uh, he notices at a prayer meeting this boy. He hasn't seen in a while. And he's, he comes to this uh, morning or prayer meeting, and he notices this boy praying very fervently and earnestly and eagerly. But then the minister was a little bit surprised because... He heard him pray, and he was basically saying in his prayer, saying this. He was, he was praying, and he was kept going, Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo. And the, you know, minister thought, that's kind of, you know, odd. He's kept praying, and he's praying really fervently, but he's kept saying, Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo. So the service is over, prayer meeting is over. So the <coughs> minister goes to this young boy, and then says, you know, I was really glad to see you pray so devoutly and fervently. But... I, Tell me, why did you keep saying uh, Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo? And then the boy answered, Well, you see, Pastor, I, I just took my geography exam, and I was praying to the Lord to make Tokyo the capital of France. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so as you can guess, the topic of our sermon today is prayer. Prayer. You know, this year we've been talking about overcoming barriers to prosperity and living a life of prosperity that God offers us. Because it's my observation that we are all saved, many of us are saved in church and in th we receive the gospel, but we don't experience this life of prosperity, full life that God has for us. And my point, point of my sermon today is very simple, and it's this, that in order for us to have this life that God offers us, this full life that He offers us, that cannot happen without a life of prayer. Life of prosperity that God offers us cannot happen without a life of prayer. In fact, it is probably the most single important factor that determines whether or not we're going to have this life of prosperity that God offers us as believers in this world. So I want us to ask ourselves, and you may be wondering today, why is it that I'm not experiencing this life? Why is it that I'm not joyful as Christian? Why is it that I'm not um, feeling good or happy about this life that I'm living right now? And you may ask yourself, is it the situation that I'm faced with? Or perhaps you may be even asking, is it my church? Am I in the right church? Is it because I'm at the wrong church that I feel this way? Or is it my family? Is it because what's happening in my family that I'm struggling and I'm not having this uh, good or full life that God wants us to have? And partly, I would say these things are probably B factors and they will play a role. But having said that, I want to tell us or suggest to us today, more than these things, chances are you're feeling that way because you're not praying. And if you do pray at times, 
it's because you're not enjoying it probably. You know, I've preached sermons on prayer, but I don't think I've ever preached with the conviction about prayer that I think I have now. And the what reason is because I think my idea of prayer was a bit wrong. Not wrong, but it's not complete, I think. It's more correct, I think. Because I think my idea of prayer for me was it was too holy and too good. And it was too textbook-like answer, ideas about prayer. Maybe it's because I'm a pastor, so I want to be holy. But my idea of prayer was this. When people would ask me, so what is prayer? I would say things like, prayer is a spiritual discipline that we Christians do. Or I would say, prayer is encountering God and you know, meeting Him and being with Him you know, one-on-one -on -one and all that kind of good, wonderful stuff, right? Or, or I would say things like, prayer is asking God to make His will be done on this earth and make kingdom things happen. God's kingdom will be done. And then, you know, because, because I, I think I was not totally wrong, like I said, it's part of the answer. And also it's because, you know, of the Lord's Prayer too. Lord's Prayer starts with, you know, our Father in Heaven. And, you know, we talk about how prayer is about Ultimately, first of all, it's about worshiping God. And then, you know, we do pray about ourselves, but it's kind of down the list because, you know, give us our daily bread doesn't come until kind of way down the list. So I think I kind of had this kind of very holy, good Christian answer about what prayer is. Maybe a pastor's answer to prayer. But my idea of prayer is now changing, and it has changing. And better yet, I think I'm rediscovering what prayer was always about. In fact, I'm discovering prayer is about me. It's not just about God. Here, I'm not saying all those things are wrong, but I'm discovering that, that prayer is about me. It's okay to let it be about me. It's about finding what I need to live this life of prosperity that God offers us. And for some reason, it was hard for me to kind of get this even though it's true because again I wanted to be more holy I guess or I had this kind of you know snobby view of prayer where prayer is about God and just me it's not about me but I'm realizing prayer is largely about me as well it's about finding joy that I need in life it's about finding hope that I need it's about finding inspiration that I need to live a life of prosperity that God wants me to live and then also I also discovered that this is not selfish. I used to think this was kind of selfish. You know how I would see a lot of people always praying about, Lord, make this happen for me, make that happen for me. I'm like, oh, you know, their view of prayer is so low. You know, you know it's not just about your need. But I'm discovering it is about you and your needs. And it's not selfish to treat prayer that way. In fact, it's most basic and fundamental of what prayer is. You can't have all these other things that I just talked about without first finding yourself and what you need in prayer first. So I was glad to come across this book called Prayer by Richard Foster, who also wrote the book called Celebration of Discipline. He says there are three movements to prayer. Movement inward, movement upward, and movement outward. And he basically says, movement inward is basically about you. Prayer and what you need, what you want out of prayer. But what he's saying is, unless you have that first, you can't go this way and you can't go that way. Of course, we want our prayer to be ultimately about upward movement and then our heart towards outside the world. But we can't get there unless we experience the prayer that's about us and that's movement that is inward. So we got to experience that in our prayer first in order for us to go upward and outward to in our prayer. So prayer often starts with ourselves first. And I'm realizing that's okay. That's not selfish. I don't know how many of you are into golf. Where's Jimmy? When, when he talk about golf, he'll be the you know one that's interested in golf. But I'm not into golf and I don't watch golf. But just a few weeks ago, I happened to catch very end of a tournament. Uh, players championship I think it's because I went to see hockey at my uh, brother-in-law's place but just before hockey there was that you know golf on and he had it on there and it was a uh, uh, kind of 
I don't know what it's called, but basically KJ Choi and one other guy, and they're just they are the only ones left. And basically, whoever wins that hole wins the tournament. And so that I was watching that, I kind of thought, wow, it's actually kind of exciting. If you actually know the player or if you cheer for the player, it is kind of fun to watch. So I was kind of cheering for KJ Choi, and just because he's Korean, you know, I don't even know the guy. <laughs> you know, so like, he's Korean. Yeah, go. <laughs> So I was watching that and he won, he won. And apparently he was the first Asian person to ever win that particular tournament, which made it even more cool. I was like, yeah, you know, we Koreans, we're so cool. You know, we Asians, you know, we're, we're good and all that. But I came across an article in the newspaper about him. Uh, of course, now he's a big deal again in Korea, but he was asked the question, you know, you got the, all these tournaments that you have to go to and you have, you're so busy always practicing. He says, how do you rest? He was asked. And he said, well, I do three things. I'll start with uh, list number three. I eat good food, you know, food that I enjoy eating to rest. I hang out with good friends that I love and we, I talk with them and have fun with them. And then the first thing on his list, he said, in order for him to find rest in all that busy schedule, he said, was prayer. He said it was prayer. And he's a very devout Christian, and, and he said, prayer was my place of rest in the midst of busy, tough schedule and training. So I want to ask you today, are you in need today? Are you in spiritual need? Are you in physical need today? Are you in emotional need or even financial need? Well, I want to encourage you, find your answer in prayer. Find your answer in prayer. You may not always get the answer you want. Perhaps you will say you're in financial need and your prayer request is that God give me a million tomorrow. That may not happen. I, but I assure you, if you seek to find your answer in your prayer, you will definitely find this. That is peace and joy and hope that will push you to go on. We had a Bible study last night and we we're going through the Lord's Prayer. And we're looking at give us our daily bread. And we're talking about um, just our, having our spiritual needs met. And one of the brothers that was there yesterday, um, David, he came and uh, he shared his testimony. And he said, you know, this past couple of weeks, um, I wrote 13 exams. And not only that, my parents were gone in India on mission trip. So I was taking care of my brother, little brother. I was doing all the stuff at home and I was writing 13 exams. And I was getting very worried and stressed because not only do my school results here, um, because it's important for him because it will determine his scholarship. And he says he was getting nervous and did I do well? I want to do well. And he said, well, I prayed. I prayed. And he said, I don't know how, but when after I prayed and I kept praying for this, I don't know how I, well I did, but this I got. And he said, this undescribable peace just came over my heart. And he said, I experienced it. And, you know, I don't know. I still don't know how I did, but that's okay. Because God has given me peace in my heart about my exams. So that's what prayer does. Find your answer in prayer. Don't find it in your own ideas of how you're going to resolve this issue, but find it in prayer. When we go to the book of Revelation, it's really, I find this interesting, this passage very fascinating. Revelation is a book about what's going to take place um, in the future. And you know, the, we get lost in the details and it will be interesting to go through it one day. But in the midst of all the confusing details, just remember this. The message of the book is very straightforward. Details might be confusing to us modern day people. But message is simple and straightforward. And the message of Revelation is this. Jesus is going to win and you, followers of Jesus, are part of this victory. No matter how it seems, no matter how the world seems right now, Jesus has won the victory. He is winning the war. He has won the war. He is winning the battle. And He will eventually bring His victory into completion. That's what this whole book is about. 